I'm Laura Ingram. This is Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks for joining us. Now, last night's commentary about the growing correlation between high potency marijuana use and psychosis, especially in teens, oh, it sent all the predictable voices just, oh, they went apoplectic. Well, tonight, my follow up will include a discussion with two of the brightest minds on the topic. But first, sabotaging America. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, the man has trouble with names, but not the names of people he maybe met once or twice, right? That would be understandable. We're talking about the names of prominent political figures, including in his own cabinet. I want to thank the, the, the uh, former general. I keep calling him general, but my, my, uh, the guy who runs that outfit over there. You may remember I got in trouble when we were running against the senator who was a Mormon. Uh, the, the governor, okay? And I took him on. And I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. Our national security advisor has been in contact with his counterparts throughout the world and our allies, as has the general, or, or excuse me, I keep calling him a general. It's so inspiring, isn't it? And today, as the supply of baby formula reached new lows, the president reached for more names. Now, uh, you, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Secretary Bergen. Mr. Secretary, I'm going to have you speak now and your remarks, and then we're going to hand it over uh, to, uh, to Samara, to my behind me here. Now, given the public outcry over how they've handled the baby formula shortage, well, HHS Secretary Javier Becerra was probably thrilled that Biden couldn't remember his name again. The question you. is whether or not there was a this could have been moved quicker. Well, I don't think anyone anticipated the impact of the shutdown of one facility uh, in uh, uh, and the, the, the Abbott facility. Did the CEOs just tell you that they understood it would have a very big impact? They did, but I didn't. Now, that's reassuring. Now, the only semi-competent person they had in the administration, at this point, I have to conclude, was Jen Psaki. And she's gone. His people just keep missing the obvious. Remember, his DHS secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, still refuses to refer to the border as a crisis. He says there are challenges. And he doesn't know basic facts when asked. General Mark Milley and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin missed the dangers of evacuating thousands in Afghanistan. And Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen missed a minor thing. Well, you may have heard about it. It's called inflation. I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take. There have been unanticipated and large shocks to the economy that I didn't, at the time didn't fully understand. So why, of course, would anyone be surprised that Joe Biden missed the importance of keeping America's main baby formula company fully operational? I mean, of course he wouldn't. They don't know anything. No wonder 57 percent of Americans in a recent CBS YouGov survey describe Biden as distracted. 51 percent call him incompetent, and only 38 percent says, well, he's effective. Look, the public isn't stupid. They know zero accountability when they see it. Biden's cabinet members shouldn't have more job security than, say, a college basketball coach. If a coach, all he does is lose, then he blames others, he's canned, right? And everyone from Mayorkas to Milley should have been let go long ago. But in Biden land, the fact that you're getting poorer, that America is getting weaker, that's just part of the necessary transition. You may not be able to fill your tank, but you should be filled with pride over all the firsts that this administration has delivered. The first female Coast Guard commandant. There's more work to be done to ensure the Coast Guard and all the branches of our armed forces reflect the full strength and diversity, including at the highest levels of our leadership. We need to see more women at the highest levels of command in the Coast Guard and across every service in the armed forces. What happened just hiring the best, whoever they are? But Biden's puppeteers don't care about objective standards or merit. Or do we really think that Mayor Pete had the background to run the Department of Transportation? or that ex-governor Jennifer Granholm was qualified somehow to run the energy department, or that the new press secretary was the most talented communicator that Biden could have had in that role. 
Now, she doesn't necessarily answer questions. She just reads what people put in her briefing book. Okay. Um, so there are two graphs behind me. Uh, what basically what they show is more supplies being sold on the market compared to a year ago. So, um, and this is without uh, Abbott uh, being in the market right now, clearly. And we've seen a lot of progress uh, happening, as you can see, in 2022 compared to 2021. Uh, and as you can see up here as well. And so, and that's due to our actions here at the White House. So obviously, we, we admit that there's still a lot more work to be done. You think? Moms can't find food for their babies. This is third world stuff happening all across America. But don't fret, because it's story time with KJP. Operation Fly, Fly Formula has cut three to four week timelines for, Nest, for Nestle product to move the, the Europe, to, Europe to 72 hour periods. Through FDA's enforcement discretion, we will get 27.5 million bottles from Bubs uh, Australians. I'm sure mothers across America are resting easy tonight after that story. Now, the lack of seriousness in the Biden White House even extends now to the U.S. Marine Corps. Forget being the fierce fighting force over land and sea. The Pentagon wants you to know that the Marines' main priority right now is celebrating Pride Month. Even the bullets are rainbow colored. I'm sure President Xi is very scared tonight. Woke virtue signaling January 6th hearings it's all the Democrats are capable of. Nothing they've done has actually helped the average American who's really struggling right now. I miss the $3 gas price, three fifty, dollars you know, but I don't know who's in charge of this, but it's pretty absurd. $140 to fill up my van. That's crazy. I think folks just want to return to what they consider normal, like the normal of 2019. We had a roaring economy, cheap energy, and no new wars. But now they have chaos and crime and declining standards of living, led by a man who the press relentlessly and dishonestly promoted as the great unifier. Normalcy, that seems to really be a big part of the pitch, that Joe Biden is somebody who, who will allow the country a return to normalcy. Biden, by inclination, is a compromiser. He's someone who wants normalcy. Also a return to functioning government. The Biden team is trying to restore trust more broadly. The trust, bri, bri Well, that's been shattered, hasn't it? Across the board. Americans want solutions and seriousness. But Biden's team gives them celebrities and stunts. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. President. Welcome to the White House. Come on up here. All right. This important month here in America, a lot of our Asian American friends have uh, been subject to real discrimination. Hate only hides. When good people talk about it and say how bad it is, it goes down. So thank you. How about how bad it is when Democrats' entire plan depends on getting you to lower your expectations or be happy with less or lose pride in your history? or chip away at our Constitution. Now that's bad. I didn't really think it was possible for an administration to be both incompetent and conniving, but they somehow have managed it. Mouthing all these platitudes about diversity and sexual identity, using stupid phrases like Putin's price hikes and ultra MAGA, it's all just smoke and mirrors, a distraction from their ongoing sabotage of America. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.